I know what love is. It feels insane to say that. Thousands upon thousands of artists, psychologists and philosophers have pondered this question since human beings first felt love. And yet I sit here today fully confident that I know it better than anyone else. I'm confident when I tell you I know what love is, and love is despicable. I mean, love is happiness and joy and light and truth. Love is also sadness and pain and heavy and deceitful. It's anger and hatred and fear and anxious and disgusting and smelly and sweet and sour and tranquil and depressing and furious and calm and sinful and dangerous and complicit. And at this point, I feel like I've lost most people here because how is love one feeling and yet all of them at the same time? Love is despicable in the way that it's both simultaneously simple and despicably complicated. So what is love if not definable through emotion? Love is looking up at the sky, an afternoon sky, say, just as the sun sets. You see the way that the clouds have formed, how it kind of looks like a dog one minute, then maybe an ice cream another. Heck, it could be a new Pokemon design for all you know. Or maybe it's entirely unique. What if you're the first human in history to see this cloud in this specific formation? Or hey, what if you're not? What if some geezer 200 years ago looked up into the horizon and saw the sky the same way you see it now? Heck, what if someone all the way back in ancient Egypt looked up during the sunset and saw the same clouds in the same formation with the sun shining through them in a radiant dance of blue and white and red and orange and pink? And what if they felt the same way as you? This... This connection to the heavens. Like, you've just figured everything out. Like, it's not for very long, and you probably forget about it after a while, but just for that singular moment, you knew. Love is walking home at night, and you're alone, and you feel alone, and you felt alone for longer than a person should be alone. But then, you look up into the night sky, and there, cutting through the darkness, there's the moon. Pale, small, and unassuming, but unmistakably the moon. And you go, it's you. It's you. I remember you. God, it's been ages since I've seen you. I always knew you'd come back. What am I saying? You were always there. Even if I couldn't see you. I'm not alone anymore. And then you don't feel alone anymore. Love is clearing out your childhood bedroom. And as you're digging through a box to find things to chuck away, you find an old plush toy you used to have when you were five years old. And you think, <laughs> oh, I loved this thing when I was five years old. But as you pick it up out of the box, you realize that it barely resembles the toy you got back when you were five years old. What well, The fur is all matted and crusty from all the times you took it out in the rain and mud. There's fluff coming out of a wound you made when you tried to yank it out of a closed door that one time. The once vibrant colours have dulled, there are moth bites all over it, and it's covered in dust from being trapped in a box alone for probably over a decade now. And you feel this strange... guilt? Because you know that if you were a bit more careful with how you treated it when you were younger, it wouldn't look... like this, like a shell of its former self, today. And no matter how much you cry and beg and plead, no matter what repairs you try to make to fix what looks broken, it will never really go back to the way it was before. It changed. And there is nothing you can do about it. Ugh, and now you're crying over a toy you haven't thought about in years, and you pull them into this tight, 
bear hug, squeezing them as tightly as you would have squeezed them back when you were five years old, hoping they can hear you scream, I am so sorry I abandoned you. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Please. Please forgive me. I still love you. And, um, and despite your guilt, you don't feel any animosity coming from your old friend. Now, who are we to interpret how a toy might be thinking? But I like to imagine that despite how much has changed over the years, they're just happy to see their old friend again. Love is the sunrise. It's the sunset. Love is the sun and the moon and everything in between them. Love is the birds that sing at three in the morning. Love is the crackle of a cherished vinyl on a gramophone. It's the vastness of the countryside on the top of the hill. And it's how the vacuum cleaner can perfectly slot into that one gap in the house. It is the thrill of flirting with that attractive person at the club who's taking you home tonight. And it's the endearing groan of hearing your spouse say the same stupid joke for the a millionth time. Well, it's terrifying. It's wonderful. It's tiring. It's awakening. It's religious. It's cynical. It's logical. It's absurd. It's sweet and sour and spicy and umami. It makes you cry and laugh and throw up all at once. It's ugly. It's mesmerizing. It's virtuous. It's despicable. Everything finally makes sense. Nothing makes sense at all. I know what love is. Through all of its deceptively simple complications, I know what love is. And love is... beautiful. <laughs> Ugh, my god. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. I hope you have a more enjoyable one than mine. <laughs>